So let's check out the Zero Explorer, provided for us by Hobbico. I should begin by pointing out that this is the Explorer V, which includes an HD camera and a three axis gimbal from Zero. There's also a G model available, which includes a gimbal for a GoPro, as well as a base model that doesn't include either a camera or a gimbal. Okay, let's see what's inside. Got a life-size representation of the aircraft itself, a uh, warranty card it looks like, and a piece of protective foam. And here we have the aircraft itself. It's obviously a very sleek, distinctive appearance, which is about as far removed as possible from the flying white blobjects we see all the time these days. It feels very sturdy without being too heavy, but of course we don't have a camera or a gimbal on board yet, or the battery. Taking a closer look, here are a few things that jump out at me. The prop mounts on the opposing motors are very clearly either black or silver, and I'm sure that corresponds to the directions the propellers turn. We also have this pattern of vents, which are no doubt here to provide ventilation for the ESCs. However, that probably means you don't want to take this thing flying in the rain. Right in the center here is the power button. Flipping it over, on the underside we have lights, on the tip of each of the limbs, connecting and mounting points for the battery and the gimbal. And check this out, they've got a little pre-flight checklist right next to where the battery mounts, and it actually covers some pretty good safety tips. We've also got these landing struts, which are manually actuated between the up and down position. Obviously, if you're gonna mount the camera gimbal on here, you're gonna want the struts in the down position. Okay, let's see what else they've got in the box here. We'll begin with the manuals. Got a nice little envelope here. Wow, look at that. Very classy production values. First up, we have disclaimers and safety warnings an inventory of the contents of the package, instructions for the Netherlands, in Spanish, Italian, French, German, and my personal favorite, English. All right, so the manual's a single sheet, full color printing, very nice. On the front here, it goes over the controller, the basic settings and maneuvers, and on the back here, we've got detailed information about how to mount the battery, the propellers, and the gimbals. You might want to keep this handy when you go flying because up here there's a little chart that'll help you decode what the LEDs are telling you, as well as the compass calibration procedure. Oh, looks like it's the gimbal. Slide this out of here. It's been very carefully packaged. All right, and there we have the camera gimbal assembly, complete with a built-in vibration damper. It ships with this plastic holder, which is used to keep the gimbal from flopping around and damaging itself. I'd definitely hang on to this so you can use it yourself when you're storing or shipping the aircraft. Next, the camera has got a small rubber lens cap over the lens. And underneath that, you'll find a filter which is made for flying on sunny days. On the top of the camera, you'll see a micro SD card slot, and inside of that, an eight gigabyte SD card. In addition, on the front of the gimbal, you'll see a slot for a micro USB connector so you can connect the gimbal to your computer, as well as a button which can be used to trigger video or photographs. And it looks like we've got something else in here. What do we got? Oh, this is a part called the range extender. And although it came in the gimbal box, it actually clips onto the back of your radio, and we'll come back to it later. Wow, this one's heavy compared to all the others. And here we have ah, this is your AC power converter for uh, charging the battery. Uh huh. This is the battery charger itself, so the battery slides in here in order to charge. And this, I'm guessing, is the aircraft battery. And let me tell you, it's heavier than it looks. And I know batteries are heavy, but this one really feels especially dense. And it's a smart battery, which means it's got a button on here we can press. And essentially it's got an electronic fuel gauge. 
Looks like it's about half full, so no doubt they shipped this with a storage charge. On the side here, we see it's 5200 milliamp hours and 11.1 .1 volts, so a three cell battery. A, uh, it looks like a power cord, the kind which is commonly used for a PC, and a plug-in for a US style wall socket. In the box, we've got one more little guy here. It's an A to micro B USB cable of the same sort you'd use to charge a cell phone. Although in this case, you plug it into the back of the charger and plug the micro B into the radio in order to charge that. Okay, one more of these triangular shaped boxes. Let's see what's in it. Crack it open and, oh, we've got propellers, eight in all. And also, they alternate between black and silver hubs, depending on the direction of rotation, which corresponds to the motor mounts we saw earlier. We also have what appears to be a, an anti-static zip bag with a whole mess of little bags inside it. First of all, we have a zero branded neck lanyard for the radio. We have a small wrench. I peeked ahead and this is actually for tightening the mount that attaches your cell phone to the radio. We have a Phillips head screwdriver, which matches the size of the screws that are used to put the aircraft together. We have a bag which contains individual screws as replacement parts. And along with that, a bag which contains extra vibration dampers and landing skid pads. All right, and the last thing we have in here is sort of a lens cover, which replaces the sun filter, which came on the camera. Okay, and there's only one box left in here. Let's, let's see if we can figure out, maybe by carefully studying it, what it is. So like everything else in here, it is very carefully packaged right down to these little plastic covers they've got on top of the joysticks. Get it out of this bag. And here in this ultra bright, can't possibly miss me green card is a warning which basically says, stick with level one on this controller, which requires GPS mode to fly if you're a beginner. And that's probably pretty good advice. All right, take that off. Take the little rubber caps off the radio. And I have to say, this radio feels really good in the hand. The sticks spring to the center in both axes um, like most modern multi-rotor controllers these days. Right in the center here, we have a three position mode switch. And then across the bottom, we have intelligent orientation control, the return to home button, and the automatic takeoff and land button. We also have a row of LED indicator lights. And then on the shoulders of the radio up here, we have two scroll wheels. The one on the left controls the vertical angle of the camera. And the one on the right, believe it or not, controls the brightness of the lights which are on the limbs of the quadcopter. I guess this will come in handy if you suddenly need to find yourself working in stealth mode. Finally, on top we have this pull-out tray that accommodates a smartphone, which provides your live video feed and your telemetry. So that's everything out of the box. Let's get it set up. So first thing I'm doing here is, is charging everything. So I want to get charge the battery. It shows I'm about a little over halfway charged right here with the light blinking being charging still. And the radio when charging, their light is red. And let's mount the gimbal real quick. It's actually super, super simple. Little green thing here. Line up with the green part on the gimbal. Kind of fits in place and then clicks. And that's it. That's, that's mounted now. Put the gear down. And let's put the battery on there too, so we can power it up. Pretty simple also. Battery, just battery going down in place here. Slides forward, and the tab slides up. And now, not gonna come off there. And of course, last in this case, let's remove the lens cap and remove the filter itself. You can see the baggage in the four corners here. And put the translucent one on there. Okay, good to go. And of course, remove the little retention mechanism here. It keeps the gimbal safe for transportation. So for the app, you'll need a phone or a device to connect to the system. 
Now this little phone here is a 4.3 inch screen and it fits perfectly in this little clamp here. So that's awesome. The problem is this is kind of an older device for me. It runs 4.1, you need 4.4 better. So this device is out. This is my normal phone. It's a Note 3, so a little over five, you know, 5.6 inch screen. Does not fit in the little retention clamp here, so I can't use it, unfortunately. So, let's just ditch the idea of doing that. And might as well use a bigger device, like an iPad. iOS 8.0 or better, you're good to go. So to get the app, you have a little QR code in the manual here. You've got to scan that. So install a QR code scanner and put the, the QR code in front of the camera here. Grab it, there it is. Once you've scanned the QR code, you've got this website here and you choose your model. You can go to Explorer V, you can say iOS, and it's got other options for firmware and such and user guides. Well, let's click on this here and go to the App Store. Okay, we got it in the App Store, so let's uh, download the app. So while the app here is downloading, I'm going to actually power up the aircraft. First thing we have to do is attach the range extender to the radio, which is actually pretty simple. Just take it and it goes here and snaps on, and then power up the radio. This little switch down here, it vibrates once, and then the aircraft. And open. Okay, so here we have the software. We can flip through our different options here. This is just showing us when to start aerial photography. And yeah, why not? I don't know where I am. Hello, hello. Okay, so we have a quick rundown of the different options here. It tells you what all the different functions on the top are here, which is really nice. So we've got the set return, we've got our altitude, our speed, our distance, a Wi-Fi signal, aircraft power, our flight mode. This is our uh, remaining shots or video. You've got the follow me and the different switching modes. So you can, you know, whether it's shooting, uh, follow snap, you've got your shot and film modes here, real time preview button, and of course a map over here. So with the aircraft now powered on, let's minimize this app and let's go to our settings and find the aircraft. It'll be called Explore Something. So there it is. Let's join that network. Okay, there we are, we're good to go. Let's go back to our app. And now we have good Wi-Fi and satellite. And here's the live video feed off of the camera here. So nice, now you can take the radio and control its angle. So before we go out in the field, I wanted to check the latency and see how bad it was. So let's drop my hand in front of the lens. And you know, it doesn't, doesn't seem that bad. I've seen it far, far worse. It is Wi-Fi, so expect a little bit of latency. So let's go to the field and fly. So the first thing we need to do before we go flying is calibrate the compass on the Zero Explorer. You'll want to remove any metal objects on your person as well as standing clear of metal structures in the vicinity. The next step is to power on the radio and then the aircraft, making sure it's on a level surface. To enter compass calibration mode, pull the throttle stick all the way to the bottom and press the IOC button three times. The lights on the back of the aircraft will turn solid green or yellow depending on if you're in attitude or GPS mode. Next, hold the aircraft in a horizontal orientation and rotate through 720 degrees. I don't know why 360 wouldn't work. I think they're trying to make me dizzy. Once you're finished with your horizontal rotations, the lights will begin blinking rapidly yellow. Next, rotate the aircraft into a nose down position, vertical, and resume rotation. Again, at least 720 degrees. When the process is complete, the lights will resume their standard blinking pattern. One more thing you need to be aware of with this aircraft is there's a lock you have to put in place to make sure the battery is secure. You do not want that falling off while you're in flight. If the lock is not in position, you'll notice that the on button blinks rapidly. Now we can see how well it flies. Yeah. 
So I'm starting off in mode one and it's a little slow. <laughs> It'd be great for a beginner, but it, it feel, it's very docile. Full stick is just creeping along. It's really, well, I guess if you're getting a, what a nice smooth, slow camera shot, perfect for that. It's very, very easy. It's just GPS is locked on. If I Lilo stick, it just puts itself in a hover there. But yeah, mode one's a little sluggish for my taste. Let's try mode two. Oh, wow. Well, mode two, it took off with authority, but then the top speed seems to be somewhat limited. It doesn't have as much, no, definitely not as much as far as the overall top speed. Not as aggressive, but it did take off quick though, unlike mode one, which took off very slowly. So mode two is acceptable, I think. That's a pretty, that's not bad actually. Let's try mode three. Mode three. Takes off with authority much faster. There we go. That's more like it. So the aircraft's going pretty quick now. Let's go over here. Oh, it's flying very nicely. This is this. You know what? The aircraft flies like it's on rails. It really is something. I, you know, from flying other aircrafts and Phantoms and whatnot, it's a very different flight characteristic. This seems somehow very precise. Not that a Phantom isn't, but this is just a different level of precision, I think. So I'm playing with the aircraft and reading the manual. We notice that there's no way to disable GPS. It's either enabled if you've got more than six satellites or disabled with less. So if you're indoors, attitude mode. If you're outdoors, likely GPS mode. But it flies great, though. One of the nice features this aircraft has, automatic takeoff and landing. Now, we've seen that before, but this one here uh, is pretty refined, actually. So first what you do, you start the motors and just press this little button here. It ascends to maybe eight feet or so, and then you can take control and go fly around. When you press it in again, it will land. Now, the nice thing about the landing is you have some control over it. So if it's drifting a bit, you can kind of maneuver it around, but it's landing if that button's pressed. Now you've got some degree of control, but not a lot, it'll feel really heavy. If you give it throttle with that thing in landing mode, it'll be real heavy and won't go up as fast. So when I take off again, unpress the button or depress the button and then take off normally. Now, one thing we did notice though, once you initiate a takeoff, it will ascend to approximately eight feet or so. And you don't have control over that unless you lower the throttle directly, but it, it wants to keep going up and up and up until it reaches that height. So something to be aware of. So while Tekkenstein's flying, I'm going to show you the telemetry on this iPad here. It's too big to fit inside the holder, but it makes a great platform for showing you because the screen's larger. Okay, so here we see the app. Across the top, we've got the number of satellites, which is 10 right now. The battery condition of the aircraft at 61%. Uh, H is the height in meters, 8.6. And S is speed in meters per second, uh, about four right now. And then D, distance, is how far it is from the launch point, about 50 meters at this point. One thing to be aware of is that you can change what parameters it displays up here using the menu button. So go to display settings. But something to be conscious of is you can only have so many instruments showing at the same time. You can't show them all. So for example, if I click on Wi-Fi, it says beyond the scope of the display. So if I want to see my Wi-Fi, I have to sacrifice another instrument, like say, turn off distance, and then I can turn on Wi-Fi, and I see that gains there. So choose your instruments carefully, the ones you really want while you're flying. Down here in the lower right-hand corner, we see a mini-map, which is blank because we're not connected to the internet right now, but you do see the little home indicator, which is a nice touch. And over here on the right, we've got the camera controls, where, for example, we can change back and forth between shooting video and stills. With that said, this is probably a good time to go check out how the camera works. Two more things on the radio that both concern the camera. The knob on the right shoulder allows you to pitch the camera up and down. And then the knob on the left shoulder, believe it or not, controls the brightness of the lights. And at first I was like, why on earth would you want to control the brightness of the lights? But now I see it, it makes sense. If you're flying in a low light situation, those lights are so bright, they can actually shine through on the lens of the camera, which would uh, distort your shot. So actually a handy feature. We're gonna go ahead and do a flight endurance test for you. We started with a 93% charge on the battery and we landed at 20%. 
and we figured this would also be a good GPS position hold test for you. We only intervened once when the aircraft started to drift out of frame, so this should give you a pretty good sense for how that works over time. And this GPS result is especially impressive because as you can see from the clouds in the background, we do have some wind today. And finally, we're going to do the gimbal torture test to see how good a job it does at taking out severe control inputs. So that was our look at the Zero Explorer from Hobbyco. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.